not all classics are meant to be read just because they're classics. The first book is 1984 by George Orwell. It sounds too dystopian for my taste buds. It sounds scary. It sounds like something that teachers would force you to read. So for that reason, it's a meh. For me. So the next book is Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain is so overrated. I read it in high school. Even Miss McQuillan from 10th grade could not make me love this book. I hate it to pieces. Like it has racist undertones. Like the black and white friendship is just too stereotypical for me. And that's why I say it goes straight into the recycling bin. Just toss that bitch in there. The next book is Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And you guys don't kill me for this, but I think it's a complete meh the the adventures are really boring to read they feel so weird my cat is making such weird noises but anyways i found it so freaking boring to read okay benedict cumberbatch makes everything amazing he could take like your mother screaming at you into beautiful acting if he was to play your mother like that guy can make anything beautiful and he made sherlock holmes beautiful for me before him ugh like no, even Robert Downey Jr. couldn't make it beautiful in that Sherlock Holmes adaption he did. So uh, let's go to the next one. The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. This book is another meh for me. I've read it in high school. I got all this symbolism, but books that try to hit me over the head with like symbolism, fairy tale style, uh, not there for me. It's 100% meh. Okay, so the next book on this list is The Elif and Other Stories by uh george lewis borges what the hell is that never heard of it have you heard of it how's this a classic if i haven't the book nerd heard of it and um i might have an inflated ego because i'm a book lover but tell me if my ego is um over inflated because i maybe should know this book but i totally do not animal farm by george orwell ninth grade lit class i freaking hated this book hey a a tid okay the all that communist undertones all of that like i cannot take it i'm not there for that it's dystopian it's horrible this goes straight into the recycling bin like chuck that thing out chuck 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 Aesop's Fables by Aesop. Now, fables are things where they're stories with like moralistic values underneath. Okay, get that shit away from me. I don't need, I don't need that. Throw it into, apparently I threw it into the meh pile. Just throw it into the meh pile. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Okay, I get it if you love it. I love the Tim Burton movie. I love the original movie, the Disney classic, but, but. But, 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 but it's a meh for me because this book is like old, archaic, I cannot read it, cannot get into it, I did not read it as a kid, so I cannot, like, I cannot connect with it at this age and stage of my life, but maybe you connect with it and so you might kill me for saying meh, but don't kill me. I'm here with my opinion, it's going to be controversial, it's going to be amazing. That's why you're here, right? Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, this book, I have never read it. And here's a disclaimer, I'm gonna talk about books I've never read, and I'm gonna rank them based on what I think I would love them if I read them. And I think this book could be a holy book level for me, like a holy, holy book level. Cause honestly, it sounds amazing. All that women finding herself like, good Lord. And I love Russian literature and I can't like stereotype books, but every Russian lit book I've read has been a 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Anne of Green Gables. Now this book I grew up reading as a kid. My mom, my Indian mom grew up reading this as a kid. So we both have a special connection to old time America and this book is holy book for us. As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. I don't know why, but I feel like I will not like his writing. I've never read Faulkner before. So I give this a meh. Beloved by Toni Morrison. Okay, I could read that again. So could read that again pile, but but friends, this book is torture stuff. Everything by Toni Morrison makes me want to go and cry under my pillows and never come out ever again and just kill myself. Because honestly, that's what her lit is about. It's way too real for me. And good lord, the truth sometimes is too much for all of us. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Again, amazing book. Killed me. I died. I'm not alive anymore. I'm here in front of you as a holy spirit. And this book is not a holy book for me, but it's a good read again book. Brave New World by Alex Huxley. I cannot take dystopian novels. It's like straight to the recycling bin. Straight, straight, straight. Bye-bye. See you later in the landfill. The Brothers 
Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I think, again, Russian lit, holy book level. Bye bye, I've never read it though. <laughs> I am biased, I am stereotyping, but we are enjoying it. Catch 22 by Joseph Heller. I tried it in high school, tried it in my adulthood. This goes straight to the recycling bin. I don't even know why I still have my copy. This needs to be dunked in a cup of coffee, boiled again, and then shredded into a thousand pieces in my blender, in my 1200 watt blender, thrown away, and then fed to the, to the hyenas in the in, in wild prairies of Africa. The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Again, overrated. Boy finds himself. Uh, what is it called? Buildings Roman Novel. Okay, okay, I cannot take it. I read this when we were all having existential, existential crises in high school and literally this book just compounds your depression, compounds your desire to leave school, to never talk to anybody again, and that's why I throw this straight into the recycling bin. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Rodal. Okay, amazing. I loved it as a kid. I read it in an airplane flying somewhere. I could read it again. Another childhood book, Charlotte's Web by E.B. Wilbur. E.B. Wilbur, Wilbur's the name of the pig, E.B. White. I think this is a holy book for children. I loved it, I bought it as an adult and I love it to pieces. -e 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 Call of the Wild by Jack London. This is a 100% meh for me. I never read it, but it's still a meh. I will judge it based on the covers of the books that I've seen, based on the fact that it sounds like an old man wrote this. And, um, well, I love old men books, like I love Russian literature, but again, can I, do I have to read it just because it's a classic and just because like it's on every classic literature list on Goodreads and the internet? Like, why, why, why? A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Like, this book, I tried reading it. I hated the crap out of it. Again, dystopian, weird, odd. Like, do you do we call books classics just because they're well written and odd? Like, they don't make you feel anything. They don't make me think deeper. They don't just like okay, like just throw it in the recycling bin. Why am I even describing a book that I hate? The Code of the Woosters by P.G. Woodhouse. Oh my God, give me Woodhouse. I can bathe in Woodhouse. I can live in Woodhouse. I can live in Woodhouse's books and never come out. Please, give give me Wooster, give me Jeeves. I need them in my life. I don't know who I was before I read this book. This is like holy grail. Everything by Woodhouse is holy grail. Holy book. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe, anything but Edgar Allan Poe is, okay, I could read it again. It inspired so much literature. I'm not the biggest fan, but I respect it immensely. I think it's beautiful. I still think, every time I'm cold, I'm like, the Annabelle Lee, there was a chill that killed my Annabelle Lee. And I'm like, wow, wow. Color Purple by Alice Walker. I know this is an important book. Oprah loves it. And because Oprah loves it, I hate it because I cannot read anything that's been overhyped. And, um, well, now I read things that are overhyped. Please watch my YouTube channels. I overhype books myself. But, like, okay, if someone talks about it way too much, especially when you're growing up, you feel rebellious and you don't feel like ever reading it ever, ever again. And this is why I think that this book is a meh. Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Okay, that goes straight in the recycling bin for me because the cover is so creepy, okay? I judge a book by its cover. I'm that bad girl. I can be a bad girl. This is my YouTube channel, and you guys, I give you permission. Permission slip written for you guys to be bad girls and bad boys too, whatever you feel like. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Dumas. Okay, sounds boring, sounds too old for me, sounds horrible, and I give it a meh. I never run it. <laughs> Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This book, I did a review on it. I think it was my first video I ever did. It is a holy book. Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. I saw this book's cover online. Look terrible. I care about dogs. I don't care about this book. The Death of Artemio Cruz by Carlos Fuentes. What is that? I've never heard of it. It goes into the what is this pile? Diary of a Madman and Other Stories by Lu Shun. Never heard of it. It's not classic to me. Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. Okay, I could read it again. Um, you all know what's about. Holocaust book. Holocaust books, are, and if they're well written, they go straight to the could be read again pile. They're not a holy book because they depress me, make me cry, make me hate this world, make me hate racists, make me hate um, anti-Semitic people, and um, just upsets me thoroughly. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Okay. I did a project on this in 12th grade and um, in AP Lit class and this book 
is a 100% recycling bin for me. Like get out of here, go through the dumps of hell, and don't come back, stay where you wrote your book, like what you wrote your book about hell, right? Just stay there, don't come out, because this book is just so boring, you're being overhyped because you're an old Italian writer, like please! Just because you're old Italian doesn't mean you're so cool. I mean, you're not as cool as the Renaissance, you're not as cool as like the Sistine Chapel, you're not as cool as the Pope's church, like literally. Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes, Saavedra. Sounds really boring. Uh, some people say it's the oldest novel in the world. I don't agree. I think the Tale of Genji is the oldest novel. But anywho, just because it sounds boring, but it's Spanish and I love Spanish things, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. Dracula by Bram Stoker, amazing. I loved it. Epistolary novel done really, really well. I mean, epistolary novels are not that believable, so I'll say it could be right again. Emma by Jane Austen. Do I need to say anything about this book? Guys, read it if you haven't read it already. It is a holy grail. Holy. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Dystopian. Meh. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Oh my god, I read this way too many times in, in, in my English lit like major classes. Okay, this is a definite like could be read again, but I, I okay, I'm done with it. The Giver by Lewis Lowry. Get out of here, you ruined my childhood. My teacher forced it upon me and I hate it. This is recycling bin material. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Go to bed again. Go to bed again. Oh, it's very nice. It's a little bit nice. Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I'm just saying it outright. Everything by Charles Dickens, he's writing every word for a penny. The more he writes, the more pennies he got. This guy was money hungry. Okay, this is a meh for me. Meh. Great Gatsby by Fitzgerald. Okay, holy, holy, holy book. That was one of the books you read in high school that you didn't want to chuck out the window. Grimm's Fairy Tales. I think this is, could be read again. It's, it, it's, no, it's a holy book because like, yeah, it's inspired way too much to be just not a holy book. Gulliver's Travels, we've heard about it our entire childhood. It is not the best for me, the lily pup people, all that. It's creepy. It's a meh for me, meh. Mm. Hamlet, read this a thousand times in high school and in, in undergrad. It is like, could be read again for me. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Okay, shut up, get out of here. Like, oh, you're dystopian, you're scary. I don't want to read you ever again. It gave me no feelings other than chaos and claustrophobia, so get out. Just, 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 just leave my country. Go away and never come back. Harry Potter, holy book. I'm not going to say anything else. Harry Potter is a holy book. Bye. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Read this in 12th grade AP Lit. I hate it. It has colonialistic undertones. It is kind of... I just can't take colonial books like literally like this is way too much info for me way too much like African authorizing okay this goes into recycling bin gone gone here's to you Jesusa by Elena Pontiotoska what is that like never heard of you you're not a classic in my eyes his trigger's got to the galaxy do I need to say anything else I love the whole series entire thing um definitely holy 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 the Hobbit, meh. Like it's not as good as Lord of the Rings. I don't even know why we like it. I don't know why we read it. Holes by Lewis Sacker. Get out of here. You ruined the fifth grade for me. You ruined it. We were forced to read you. Get out of here. Get into my recycling bin. Hopscotch by Julio Cortazar. What is that? Never heard of it. So you don't go into any list except for what is that? The Iliad by Homer could read it again. Uh, literally, like overhyped. Okay, just because this is the only writing that survived from the olden days doesn't mean you're the best. But I liked it. I liked the themes. I liked the movies and stuff that came out of it. So I guess you be could be read again. You know, Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Now I gave this to my 10th grade English teacher. This book I never read it myself, and I gave it to her. So I must think it was good. So it's a meh. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now let me tell you, holy book! Journey to the center of the earth sounds boring, sounds like science fiction that's outdated, so I give it a meh. Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Tried a billion times, even this, in like 2020 to read this book. I could not, for the, for the love of God, get into it. Like literally, I do not need your philosophy. I do not need your venting. I do not need all of the emotions attached to you as a narrator. I want the plot, I love the plot. But because you did all of this, I'm gonna throw you into the recycling bin. I did not need 
7,000 pages on just your fit like philosophy life of pi by Anne martel i read this i hated it i like literally the pi patel everything is so unbelievable and the ending was so unconclusive and i know it's supposed to be philosophical but literally sometimes you make a promise when you write a book and you made a promise to entertain but you left us with philosophy literally recycling it the lion the witch the wardrobe again way too much symbolism way too much ugh recycling bin the Little Prince, never read it, sounds amazing, could be read again pile. Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. Love the book, love the layout, 2020 movie. Please, please, this is my holy, holy, holy book! Holy book, sponsored by God. Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, okay? I like the sexy covers, that's why I say could be read again. I've never read it though. Lord of the Rings by J.R. Tolkien. Okay, I love everything other than The Hobbit in this series. So, holy book status. Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Meh. Tried reading it, hated it. Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. Could be read again status. I've never read it because it's about a woman unsatisfied with her boring doctor husband. I am married to a doctor and I just don't want to read it because what if I read it and I think my husband's boring like right now I think he's so exciting we've only been married for like two years now one and a half years now okay what if I read this book and I think oh my I'm married to the worst of men doctor so poorly and I don't want to be influenced I do not live with influence I influence myself <laughs> metamorphosis by Franz Kafka Tried reading it, I think I read it. And I'll meh, meh, Moby Dick. Do want to say more? It's the worst book ever. I tried reading it, so my book chill. I try thinking about reading it, and I'm like, just because you love words and you love symbolism, do you think you're gonna take a brick of a book and smash it over our head? Please, dear God, no recycling bin now. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Read it in undergrad, loved it. Could be read again. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I read this and guess the the ending like way before the middle started. So for that, I say meh. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Literally the suicide at the end, everything that goes, not suicide, like I think he accidentally kills himself. All of that to me is trauma, especially because I'm 14 to read it in school. So this goes straight into the recycling bin for me. Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. Already sounds boring. Loved some of Ernest Hemingway's stuff. Like a movable feast in Paris. I love it. But this one sounds boring about old men in the sea. So I give it a meh. Oliver Twists by Charles Dickens. We give this a recycling bin because it sounds so boring. And again, I said he writes for the pennies. 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Dry reading it. It gets a recycling bin notice from me. 1001 Nights by Unknown, also known as the Arabian Nights. I love this. I read the translation by Hussein Hadawi. And you can get it on Amazon. And if you read the Burton translation, pity you. Go away and don't come back to my channel. That guy is Orientalist Supreme, okay? Read. Hussein Ahadawi's translation and you will not be disappointed. I tell you it's sexy, it's erotic, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it's mind blown. Mind blown holy book. A Passage to India by Ian Forster. I love his books. He that could be read again. Pedro Paramo by Juan Rulfo. What is that? Never heard of it. You're not a classic for me. The Phantom Toll Booth by Norden Joster. Now this sounds like such a fun children's book. Like you go through a toll booth and then voila, you're in a different place. And I think that sounds amazing. Like could be read again. Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. That sounds so good, but what is that? It goes in the what is that pile. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Amazing holy book. Give me Darcy, give me life. The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I think that sounds amazing. I tried listening to the audiobook, got bored, but I think I would give it another chance and I think it could be a could be read again book. Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Incredibly horrible morals, encouraging little kids to do literally the worst things and die for each other. We don't die for other people. Love is not a good enough reason to die for another person, little kids. If you're listening, this is a like meh book. A series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. It is pompous, this book. Literally, it explains words and it 
tortures kids and literally traumatizes us. Like I used to think reading this, what if I lost my mom and daddy? What if I want to live with an evil relative? I mean, we all have those. So because of that, this book goes into the recycling bin straight. The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. What is that? Never heard of it, you're not a classic. Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Dystopian, sounds horrible, it's an ugly cover. You get recycling bin status. The Sound of a Mountain by Yasunari Kawabata. Could read again, pile. I love Japanese literature. I was a Japanese lit, not Japanese lit. I was a Japanese major in undergrad, so I love Japanese. The Stranger by Albert Camus. Again, sounds terrible. Recycling a bit. The Tale of Genji by Murasaki Shikibu. I love Japanese literature. I've read a lot of parts of Tale of Genji. It's amazing. Could be read again. Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achibe. This Nigerian novel has some things that I found really problematic in it. I know it talks about colonialism, but just because something talks about colonialism and it's available in English for you to read doesn't mean that it's like the best classic available. It just means that there are some books that you need to read in a foreign language and learn that language and your colonial ass couldn't read it. And that doesn't mean that this is the best book ever written. And again, I read it in world lit class in high school and it was recycling bin material for me. The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. Um, sounds boring, old white guy, right? Rhoda, like literally cannot deal with it. Meh for me. Treasure Island by Steven Robertson. Um, the covers that I've seen are boring looking. Uh, the content sounds boring. We've seen so many movies and TV shows on this trope of being stranded in an island that I think that this book definitely deserves the um, recycling bin and this book is actually a uh, knockoff of a book in Arabic called Hey Ibn Yaksan which is a beautiful book um, and it was written in the 13th century and I'm sure that the English manuscript was available for like it was written in, in Arabic and I'm sure the translation was available to Robertson and he kind of like pillaged it. Ulysses by James Joyce. Um, if you guys don't know it's written in like seven different ways of writing there's a like play there's like different types of perspective and it's just like an experimental writing style don't give me experimentation i want a good novel i don't want like this post-modernistic like weird ass like english lit gone wild kind of experience like please don't do that to me you go straight into the recycling bin war and peace by leo tolstoy never read it probably would love it love russian lit love russia um, we give this holy book strat status even though we've never read it. Watership Down by Richard Adams. Like, what the heck is this? I've heard of the phrase Watership Down, but like, never heard of this book. Probably terrible because I've never heard of it. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh! Do I even need to describe this book? Oh, this gives me all the feels and my uncle's giving me presents with Winnie the Pooh characters on them. And I just, oh, I still love Pooh. It's so cute. Um, definitely a holy book. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. Never heard of it. You're not a classic for me. What the hell is that? The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Okay. Watched the movie when I was in 11th or 12th grade. Hated it. And I can see why you guys might love it because you guys grew up with it. I, on the other hand, grew up with Bollywood. Shah Rukh Khan was my Wizard of Oz. So anyways. Um, <laughs> it's a definite meh for me. A Wrinkle in Time. I tried reading this when I was in middle school. Terrible, horrible, dense, terrible, not fun. Better lit out there for little kids. Yeah, definitely goes in my recycling bin. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, our last book. This is a holy book. This book gives me all the feels. I cannot deal with it, the atmospheric moodiness, the people's moodiness, so much moodiness. You know, you don't need to write dystopian novel, Miss um, Atwood, or, um, Mr. Vonnegut or um, Mr. Huxley to be a good book. You can just make it moody, atmospheric, amazing. Um, yeah, so this is a definite holy book status for me. Thank you guys so much for joining me on an incredible journey through 100 books today. I am so happy to share this with you. Let me know which one of these books is your favorite, which opinion you agree with, and if you think that my coverage of these books was fun and if you want to see something like this again, Please like and subscribe and see you guys next time. Take care.